we're going to talk about using uh, costing the use of BKC for cryptanalysis and in particular for LWG. Uh, this is work done together with uh, Martin Albrecht, uh, Florian Gottfeld, and Thomas Wunder. Um, Martin and Thomas are also present at, at this conference. So as an overview, um, we're going to talk about lattice reduction cost models. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the experiments that we ran and uh, what uh, experimental and what theoretical results we can, uh, we can draw from them. Uh, and what this means for security estimates in particular of, of concrete proposals for uh, post-quantum secure encryption. And then we're going to uh, give some concluding remarks. Um, so lattice reduction um, cost models. Uh, well, the idea is that lattice reduction algorithms are part of the fundamental toolkit for doing cryptanalysis. Uh, uh, they've been used for, uh, for classical schemes, like for RSA, but uh, in particular they're very important for uh, lattice-based schemes. Um, because a common strategy is that uh, when we have some encryption scheme, uh, there is some secret that we're trying to protect, and um, we might be able to construct a lattice that contains that secret encoded as a very short vector of this lattice. And uh, hence, being able to find short vectors, for example, using lattice reduction, is a way of, of breaking the scheme. Therefore, being able to cost how efficient we are at uh, finding these short vectors is fundamental for uh, uh, for choosing secure parameters. And um, the heads up is that cost models uh, present literature disagree on the asymptotic cost for lattice reduction. So the first systematic uh, uh, analysis and study of uh, the efficiency of lattice reduction for cryptanalysis goes back to 2008 by Cameron Nguyen. Uh, they look at BKZ. Well, they look at a few algorithms, but for our talk, they look at BKZ and they look at the unique uh, shortest vector problem. And um, what they do is that they, uh, they look experimentally at it and we, uh, they use some, um, they use some uh, statistical analysis of, of their results in order to extract some, uh, some asymptotics. Uh, what they do is that they extract a necessary condition for being able to recover the unique shortest vector in this lattice, which is usually the one that they call the secret. And, um, and, therefore, um, and therefore break the scheme. And uh, Albrecht et al. in 2014 then uh, adapt this technique for uh, cryptanalysis of LWG-based schemes in particular. So the idea of the of the um, so of the winning condition is that we have lambda lattice, then we have a D that is the unique shortest vector in this lattice, and is of course unique uh, up to sign because if D is in the lattice, also minus V is going to be there. And we have lambda i to be the i minima. So lambda one is the length of the shortest unique shortest vector in this case, and lambda two is the length of the second. Uh, uh, independent shortest vector and so, and so on. And then uh, we look at the Hermite factor that tells us something about uh, how short is the, uh, is the vector that a certain algorithm is going to be able to recover. And so the idea is that, well, we have these lattices and these lattices uh, for, for, for cryptanalysis, they look um, random. Uh, but we know that there is something very short in there. Maybe. It depends. Uh, maybe it's random or maybe not. And, um, and so, in a sense, it should be able. If we, if there was something shorter in there, it should be able to um, to be more capable of of this. We, sh we should be able to distinguish successfully the shortest this thing is with respect to the to the second shortest vector, for example. Because the shortest the first vector, the most the more unusual, the most distant from random this lattice is going to be. And so, the necessary condition, the winning condition, is to look at the gap uh, between the second shortest vector and the first shortest vector. And uh, the largest is gap, the shorter, in some sense, is the shortest vector. And, um, and so the easiest it should be to solve the problem. And what they observed is that, well, uh, when do we win? We win with, uh, well, uh, with high probability uh, if one is able to find a gap, if one has a, has a lattice that has a gap larger than a, uh, than a certain power of the, um, of the Hermite factor for the algorithm that we're using. And, well, not the full power, but rather some fraction of that power. And what this fraction is, what this uh, tau is, is uh, estimated based on the experiments. And so if we have our, um, our condition one for winning, then we can pick the number, in the case of LWG, we're going to construct this lattice from, uh, our LW, for, from M LWG samples. And we're going to use BKZ with a block size beta uh, to, to, to reduce the basis. And so we're going to be able to extract the optimum, the smallest number of samples, and in particular, the smallest beta possible in order to recover the shortest vector. And uh, throughout the presentation, we refer to this as the 2008 model. But then, um, but then you hope happens. Uh, Akim et al. in 2016, they present a different success condition 
for always solving a unique, the unique SVP problem and uh, they use, using uh, um, BKZ. Um, so their strategy looks at what BKZ is doing at the inner working of BKZ and it also looks at what, uh, what's the promise of BKZ or in, a, in some sense or what's, what the geometric series assumption says about how good is the basis that BKZ is going to be able to recover. Uh, we refer to this model as the 2016 model and to explain uh, how it works, we first will have to review a little bit of, about BKZ. So the idea for BKZ is the following. Uh, we are given a basis for a lattice, uh, the, vector, uh, the vectors in the basis are called the VI. And then we can run the Grandschnitt algorithm and extract the Grandschnitt vectors corresponding to each VI, that we call VI star. And then we have V, which is our shortest vector, and we call VI star the orthogonal projections of these vectors with respect to the first I minus one uh, Grandschnitt vector. So the idea is that uh, we could expand the, a secret vector in the basis, and then we could just ignore the first few coefficients in some sense. And well, what do we do with BKZ? Well, we're given this basis. Uh, first, we run LLL to get uh, to, to normalize a little bit this basis to get rid of obvious linear dependencies and, and some possible causes for numerical instability. And then we plot the length of the branch mid vectors that we have uh, from the basis that we have obtained from LLL. Uh, what the, the, the geometric series assumption says is that after running BKZ, the length of the resulting basis are going to be lying on the orange line. And uh, so what BKZ does is, well, uh, we have a parameter beta, the block size. So we're going to we start by looking at the vectors v1 to v beta, and uh, in particular, sorry, v1 uh, star from v to v beta star. And we look at the lattice or at the, the these vector span. And then we call an oracle that solves exactly the shortest vector problem in this sub lattice. Uh, so what we do is we solve the shortest vector and we find a new, a new vector. And so we add it at the basis in first position. Um, we remove uh, any extra linear dependencies, and then, in a sense, we move the block to the right. So we start considering the vectors v2 to v2 plus beta. And then we rinse and repeat. And so what happens is that as the block moves to the right, we can see that the quality of the basis, or at least the line starts to look a little bit closer to the orange line. And then we get to the very last uh, time that we can call a full uh, block size uh, SVP call. Um, and then we cannot move to the right anymore because there are no more basis vectors to the right, so we just reduce the block size and, and we keep going. And this is called a BKZ tour, and after uh, enough of them, um, what happens is that indeed experimentally the blue line, the length, are more or less where they should be, what the geometric series assumption says that they should be. And so the idea of um, Alchem et al. is, okay, um, we know more or less what the length of the projections of the shortest vectors should be, and, um, and in particular, they observe that well, they intersect with the GSA. And, um, and so now that, uh, that we know this, and this depends only on uh, delta, on the Hermann factor, on the, on, the, on the algorithm and on the lattice instance, well, let's choose um, a block size that is large enough that the very last full call um, is going to be including a sub lattice that contains um, a projection of the shortest vector that is shorter than the grand schmidt vector that we should be recovering from uh, uh, the basis vector that we should be recovering from uh, from this call, and so they give this condition that uh, if the if the projection of the shortest vector is shorter than what the GSA says we should be finding, then uh, uh, then this is a win, and this is a win because if we are trying to solve position and the B, then we are trying to decide if we are dealing with a random lattice, and so the GSA should hold, or if we are dealing with a lattice that contains the shortest vector. And so, uh, well, we are finding something that is shorter than what it is, so we know that this is a, an LW lattice. And if instead of trying to solve directly uh, the search problem, so we are trying to recover the shortest vector, well, uh, BKZ, what it would do is then um, find this projection, put it where the black line is, and then uh, start a finish, start a new tool, and then at the new tool, we are in a situation where our blocks, uh, our block is going to be containing the projection that we found before, and it's going to be containing uh, a short vector that is shorter again than the GSA. And so we should be able to move this uh, ideally a little bit further, so recover a little bit a longer projection in a sense, and then we do another tool and another tool, and we recover the full uh, short vector. And uh, it should be needed. Uh, we should need at least at most uh, d over beta tools after we reach the GSA to to recover the full vector. And uh, well, the idea is that if we compare, if we choose parameters based on the 2008 model, or if we choose them based on the winning condition for the 2016 model, and then we decide a secret dimension for LWE, and then we estimate what the block size is that we need to, to solve the problem, 
Um, the two models disagree asymptotically. In particular, the 2000 model uh, costs a more expensive this strategy um, than what the 2016 model does. So we decided to experimentally verify with uh, what is the accuracy of the 2016 model. So our experiments um, were given an NW instance. Uh, so we're given the line secret dimension, the modulo, and the standard deviation for the for the discrete Gaussian. And we're assuming discrete Gaussian in this case for error distributions. Um, and then the 2000 model provides us with the number of samples and the block size that we need. And uh, we know, based on average et al, that, um, that these <coughs> and beta are going to offer us a 10% probability of being able to recover the shortest vector. Um, bless you. So um, <laughs> what we do is instead we pick uh, samples, uh, the number of samples and the block size based on the 2016 model. And uh, well, let's measure how good it is at, uh, at recovering. So let's measure the recovery rate in this case. Um, but not only that, because uh, well, that tells us something. But but would it be nice to do is since the 2016 model is based on the inner working of BKC, uh, it would be nice to monitor what BKC is doing step by step. So we're able also to tell, okay, maybe this is the recovery success, but this is also what's happening in the basis. So is this matching the prediction by Archim at all, or or is this different at all? So we instrumented BKC to measure uh, exactly what's going on in the basis, so what are the projections of B, of B, that, are, B that are being found. Um, and also we did some, uh, some analysis exactly in, in, the, in the search of the BK, so we had to slightly modify uh, the implementation of BKZ, um, but still stay in the sort of a standard BKZ uh, uh, world. And in particular, we use uh, the important experiments, we use uh, uh, the FPL library that was instrumental, great open source library for doing lattice reduction. So if you're into computational math, please consider uh, collaborating because it's a great project. So results, uh, kind of a huge table. Uh, so the idea is that we have the first three columns that are telling us the uh, LW parameters that we used for, uh, for creating our uh, lattices. And then uh, in the middle, we have the two columns beta and M 2016 that tells us what the, what the 2016 model says are the best uh, block size and the best number of samples that we need to solve the, solve the uh, to find the, to recover the shortest vector. So what we did is we just uh, threw 30,000 core hours at it. We run experiments and we run experiments for the right number of samples and for the right block size, but also for slightly smaller block sizes because based on the intuition of how the 2016 model works, if we choose a block size that is too small, we should see, uh, we should have a much less effective uh, algorithm. And, uh, and so we wanted to see exactly how sensitive everything is. And then we measure, in this case, the recovery rate. And what we have is that the 2008 model was giving 10%, uh, was tuned in order to give a 10% recovery rate. Uh, here, if we follow the parameters given by the 2016 model, we just uh, have a, around 90, 90 plus percent. I'm sad that I cannot just say 90 plus because there is at 88.8 percent, but uh, hey, um, it's pretty good. Uh, so what we think is that the experiments agree with the 2016 model. We think that it's uh, not a 100 percent recovery rate because well, the GSA is just is heuristic; it doesn't really hold at the end of the basis, and uh, and you know it's just uh, uh, we're working with randomized algorithms, but it's uh, it's uh, it looks like very convincing, convincing evidence. But there are two unexpected behaviors. And so the first one is that based on how the model uh, comes up with a, how we come up with the model, or how I came and how come up with the model, uh, we should be recovering this uh, projection of the secret vector at the last full block. So if the dimension of the lattice is d and we are counting indices from 1, then we should be finding this when we're starting the block that starts at d minus beta plus 1, and we should recover the short vector. And what happens is that we plot the probability of recovering di star and, uh, based on i, and um, well, we're tending to recover uh, this, this projection a little bit to the left. And so um, this could be an issue, but maybe not. Because uh, what happens is that this is something that we observe for, uh, for very small, um, small, par small parameter sets. And what happens is that when we plot again the GSA and we plot the expected length of the projections of the secret vector, uh, there is not one intersection. There are two intersections there. Uh, so what's happening is that, well, um, we're running BKZ, um, and then uh, we, we are not in a good position enough to recover maybe the, the, the projection of, uh, of length beta, in a sense. Uh, but uh, when we get to the end of the basis, we start reducing the block size. And we reduce it, and in the last few steps, uh, it may be gamma, and gamma may be a number like 3 or 4, uh, so a very small block size. 
But there, maybe we have an intersection, and so maybe we have the projection, a very short projection that is shorter than what the GSI says. So we recover that short projection. And then in the next tour, we have the truthful block size, and we move, and we arrive beta, beta plus gamma from the left indices. And now we have this projection, and we have again the, the, the condition holding, and so we recover this shorter projection, and we recover it a little bit to the left from, uh, from where we thought uh, we would recover it. Um, but the good news is that uh, when this could lead us to think that maybe, oh, maybe we can just choose a smaller block size, right? Because first we recover this short projection, and then we move a little bit to the left, and we recover what we wanted to recover. Uh, we don't. Uh, actually, it's not possible. The double intersection is not, we, we don't observe it for cryptographically chosen parameter sets for LW. And in particular, it just depends on the GSA, expected length. So it should be quite easy, even if it were to happen for some scheme, to just get rid of it with a small tweaks for the parameter set. So that should be not a problem. And the second uh, unexpected observation is that uh, we thought that uh, we would recover in chunks this V, we would recover it with one tool, we would recover a projection, and then uh, in the next tour another part, another longer projection, and so on. But we happen to measure that uh, after we find the first projection, there is immediately in, uh, in BKZ2 a call to LLL, and that call to LLL, and in particular a sub call to size reduction, recovers the, the whole uh, secret vector. And so actually we don't need V over beta tools, but we just need uh, one, one tool, well, the tool where we recover the projection the first time. And to explain this, after measuring it happens all the time, uh, we model the state of the basis as, um, as the state of the basis after we recover the first projection, we use the GSA, and uh, lemma happens, and lemma says that if we're using block size larger than 40, which is absolutely to be expected for cryptanalysis, then size reduction is going to recover the full short vector from the projection, with overwhelming probability. And so there we see it from a 0.9 to a 1 minus negligible, I guess, uh, probability of recovering the short vector. So this is fine. This is not something uh, out of, outside of the model. And so, um, nice, let's, let's, uh, let's recall the lattice reduction for solving USVP. So we added the 2016 winning condition to the uh, LMD estimator but, uh, by Albert Player and Scott. Uh, and we run it uh, against some proposed schemes, proposed with their parameter sets as of the time of this submission, so 2017, May. Um, and what we did is we just changed the number of samples and the block size that we're choosing. We're not changing how every submission, uh, or submission, uh, well, paper, or I guess submission for many of them, <laughs> um, uses, uh, proposes the cost strategy. So if they use seeding for the Oracle, then we use seeding how they cost it, if they use uh, enumeration, we use enumeration, if they use one call, we use one call, if they use a billion calls, we use a billion calls to the Oracle. We just keep the strategy, we change it, we change only the number of uh, LW samples and block size. And uh, here is an example, and uh, there are more in the paper. Uh, so we costed the uh, Lizard, which is public encryption, uh, Tesla for signatures, and Silk for fully homomorphic encryption. Um, and what we see is that in the case of Lizard and Tesla, um, the 2016 model costs uh, so finding a short vector cheaper uh, than what the proposed estimates were. Uh, Lizard since then um, uh, addressed this issue, but uh, uh, as, of, as of 2017, uh, the difference was uh, of 50 bits, which is quite uh, quite impressive. Uh, but uh, then for Tesla, it's not. So we guess that probably just there are many many ways of uh, getting 120 bit security, uh, 20 bits of security on LW depending on. Modulo and error, etc. So certain certain choices certain choices may be more sensible than more sensitive than others. In the case of SIL, this doesn't happen. They had already costed against uh, the dual attack by Albrecht 2017. Um, and in that case, we don't get uh, any better any any less security, but uh, we narrow the gap that there was between the primal attack and the dual attack in that case. So in conclusion. Um, we, we confirmed the, the validity of the 2016 model. We think that that should be used for lattice, for costing lattice reduction. Um, and uh, also this means that some uh, lattice-based uh, schemes might need rare parameterization if they don't consider this model with rare. Uh, but it's not a big issue. The rare parameterization is usually quite cheap in terms of uh, efficiency, so, so it's not a problem. And uh, what's the thing that the double intersection um, observation um, and, well, and the fact that it was an artifact of the experiments um, tells uh, a cautionary tale about extrapolating asymptotics for small experiments. Also in the case of the 2008 model, what I've rated out to is uh, run experiments for block size uh, around 20, and that's uh, way too small maybe to, to choose to, to make estimates about uh, the asymptotic behavior of the scheme. 
Um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much. <laughs>